time has come to talk about shopping, spending that hard-earned money. You know what? You worked hard for this money, so don't just give it away. Most people walk into a store and pay full retail and think they got a deal because it said sale over it. That's silly. Don't do that. Whether you're buying a stereo, clothes, video games, cell phones, or anything else, keep in mind you need to shop for the best deal. This lesson talks about where to find the deals, how to get discounts, and the strategies of negotiation. So go try some of this stuff. See how much money you can save. This lesson's a blast. Please welcome nationally syndicated radio host and New York Times best-selling author, Dave Ramsey. This is a fun lesson. It's about how to buy stuff and not pay too much. It's about how to buy stuff and get the best possible bargain. And I got to tell you, I enjoy getting a deal. I go at it maybe a little differently than some people. I go at it a little differently than even my wife, but I enjoy getting a deal. And you know, it's interesting to me. When I start, first started teaching this stuff, I kind of grew up in a household where we, we called it horse trading. We never had any horses, but we called it horse trading. You know, getting a deal on something, going out and bargain shopping, trying to find somebody that needed to sell something. And when I first started teaching people how to negotiate and get bargains, I had people come up to me that were offended. They would say, well, now, Goodness gracious, if, if someone were to give you a deal, then if you were to negotiate and get a deal from someone, then you must have taken advantage of them. You know, that is, a, that is a strictly American concept for someone to even think that way. Every other culture you visit all around the world negotiates everything. Negotiation is a way of life. If you've ever gone across the border of the United States to the south, to the north, if you've gone overseas anywhere, if you've been in the Caribbean, I mean, there are actual cultures that are insulted if you do not engage them in a negotiation to do a purchase. But not us. No, we get in our fleeced car, <laughs> running on credit card gas, driving on a bond-financed highway. We go to the mall and pay 120% of retail and think we got a deal because it said sale over it and never once asked if there was a better price available. We just pay the piper. I shop uh, anywhere that might have what I would want or need. Just anything will do. Um, like Abercrombie, Hollister, and American Eagle. I like to shop at Goodwill. <laughs> I shop at Best Buy and Kroger. I mean, it is so ingrained in other cultures that, well, we had these friends that were missionaries, and I think they'd been on the mission field maybe a little too long. You ever run into those folk? They were out there a little too long. We should have reeled them back in a little sooner. I mean, she comes home, and, and she's here about three weeks. They've been out there years on the mission field. She's home about three weeks. We think this woman's going to get arrested. She's in the mall going, I don't want a better deal. And the woman's going, call security. I mean, because she was up in their face trying to get a bargain. That is the way most cultures in, around the world think, but not us. And so I want to tell you first that it is okay to get a deal. It's okay to get a deal, but I'll go ahead and give you some rules so that you understand when it's okay to get a deal. It, it's okay to get a deal if you didn't lie to get the deal. You in no way misrepresented the truth. You know, you didn't tell them that your child was ill and that, you know, all of this if your child wasn't ill. I mean, and you don't use some kind of whacked out con artist thing to try to get a bargain. That's not what we're trying to do here. Now, of course, you've not set out to harm the other party. The intent of you getting a deal was not just to be abusive somehow in the process. Your intent to get a deal was just simply to get a deal. And, of course, you've approached this whole process of buying a deal from a win-win perspective. Now, I got to tell you, the stuff I'm going to teach you in this lesson, most of you have done it once or twice. Many of you have done it quite a bit. It would be the rare person in here who, as I teach this lesson, you go, wow, I've never heard that. That's not what you're going to say. You're going to go, well, I knew that. But what I want to emphasize at the beginning and at the end and in the middle of this lesson is that you make this a way of life, not just the occasional story that happened and you get to tell it. I want it to be your way of looking at things from this point forward. Make getting a bargain a way of life. The first key to opening the door to huge bargains is learning to negotiate everything. Just start with the idea that everything is negotiable. At some price, in some quantity, on some delivery date, 
Everything is negotiable. Last year's model, last year's color, I don't know what it is, but at some point, just about anything you want to buy, you can buy at a deal. Just get in that mindset. I will not accept retail as a way of life anymore. I'm going to start with the basics and say I'm going to negotiate everything. And if you approach it with really understanding what a win-win deal looks like, you won't be afraid to ask for it. Win-win deals really do work, so don't be afraid to ask for the deal. One of the best books I've ever read on negotiating was by William Urey and Roger Fisher. It's called Getting to Yes. Getting to Yes. And if you don't know who uh, William Urey and Roger Fisher are, they're the guys that, that are professional, world-renowned negotiators. They sit in things like with Jimmy Carter and the Camp David Accord. Major negotiations between countries and diplomats. They sit down, and, and the thing they talk about is that win-win really does work. And the way you can discover as you purchase something or as you engage in negotiation, how do you discover well, how to help the other party win. You have to gather information. He with the most information about the whole deal, including the other party involved, he with the most information has the best opportunity to design a win-win and will win the negotiation most of the time. So, so if you will gather information, slow down a little bit, learn about who it is you're dealing with, what are their motivations, why are they at the table, what's going on, why is it they're selling that thing? It's kind of like, well, they tell the story in that book of the two old ladies with the orange. The two old ladies have an orange in the house, and if they did the normal negotiating thing, kind of the naive negotiating thing, they both wanted the orange. And they argue back and forth, back and forth, back and forth over the orange, and finally they, they just give up and say, well, the typical thing, it's kind of a, well, it's a bad result for a negotiation because they didn't talk well long enough, and they simply cut the orange down the middle. But if they had discussed it a little bit, one lady wanted the orange to take the peel off of the orange and use it in cooking. How many of you ladies have ever used an orange peel in cooking? A another lady, the other lady wanted the orange to take the peel off of it and to eat the fruit. If they had spent time understanding each other's needs, wants, and desires, gathering information, they both could have had 100% of the orange. Instead, they spent all their time arguing. That's not negotiating. And it doesn't give you a win-win solution. If you'll gather information from people that you're working with, you can have 100% of what you want, they can have 100% of what they want, and there's no harm, no foul. That is a win-win scenario. Let me give you another example of that. Okay, I'm holding in my hand just a pretty basic, standard orange. And I'm going to actually sell this orange right now to the person who can give me a $20 bill for it the fastest. Go. <laughs> Quick, hold it up. The first, I see a 20 in the air. I'm going to take you fast as you can get here. Go fast. Somebody's got 20 bucks. You got it right here. This guy jumped. Come on. Is that a 20? It is. Now, you, you, you bought an orange for 20 bucks. Yes, I did. Just being on the front row made you a little too enthusiastic? Uh, Maybe. It's a little scary. I don't know. Come up here for a minute. Join me up here. I, um, I mean, I, I would hate to take... In, just walk right over there on that side of the table. I, I'd, I'd hate to take advantage of you in front of all these people, but... Because that's... I don't know if this is a win-win deal or not, do you? I don't. Your wife's going... <laughs> What's he done? What's your name? John. John. Uh, it's good to meet you, sir. Thank you, by the way. That was a great deal. <laughs> But just for the fun of it, let's just see what happened with this orange and see what happens with Big John here, how he came out on this. Uh-oh, look right there. What is that down in there? Go ahead and pull that out and unwind it. $100 bill. $100 bill. <laughs> I think you came out. Congratulations. a rather sticky, icky $100 bill, but it's a good trade for a 20, wouldn't you agree? So all that proves is, is that you can get an audience to do anything. It doesn't have anything to do with negotiating. <laughs>
So when you're negotiating, there's at least seven little things you can do. I call these the lucky seven basic steps of negotiating. Number one, when you're negotiating, always tell the truth. And not telling something that you know is also lying. The transmission really didn't slip when you just test drove this car I'm selling, but it has been slipping for the last three weeks. Whew. Wrong answer. You just got to look at them and go, look, this transmission's slipping a little bit. It's part of the deal. That's why I've got the car price the way it is. You're probably going to have to do a little work on that. That's part of the process of always telling the truth. How many of you have ever heard the book by Tom Stanley, The Millionaire Next Door? Raise your hand. It's a great book if you haven't read it. By the way, you ought to read it. It's the consummate study of millionaires. Tom Stanley was a marketing professor at Georgia State University, and he went all across America studying millionaires and the attributes of people that are millionaires. Now, I've established early and often, if you want to be rich people, you've got you to do rich people stuff. If you're, if you're broke and you want to be rich, do rich people stuff. If you're big and you want to be skinny, do skinny people stuff. Right? If, if your marriage isn't going good, find somebody who's been married 62 years, take them to coffee and learn about how to be married. You, know? you, they're, they're, you find somebody that's winning at something and do what they're doing to be what they are. Does that make sense? Say yes. yes. Okay. Now, what Tom Stanley did in his second book, his second book was called The Millionaire Mind. And in that book, what he did was he didn't study millionaires. He studied people that at least had $10 million. 10 millionaires. Deca millionaires. And at least had a $750,000 a year personal income and had maintained that over an extended period of time. Now, these are people that make $750,000 a year and have at least $10 million and have done this for many years, and he wanted to sit down and study them, and he studied the attributes, the character qualities of these super winners. By the way, statistically, they are in the top one quarter of 1% of Americans, a very rare animal indeed. And he studied how these rare animals work, how they think. And he, he came up with 38 character qualities or things that they had in their lives, and he ranked them according to most likely to be there every time. Number one was the thing that was there every time, all the way down to 38, which appeared the least number of times as he studied these people. I was real happy to see that, you know, you didn't have to be, have a 4.0 GPA to be there. It was, that was like, wasn't even in the top 10. Thank goodness I got a chance. But the interesting thing to me was the number one characteristic of these very, very wealthy people, when he talked to their employees, when he talked to their vendors, when he talked to their, their family, their wife, their husband, their kids, when he talked to their in-laws, when he talked to their neighbors, when he talked to people who didn't even know them at, up close and personal but knew them by reputation, in every single case, not one exception of the people he studied, every single one of them, so this attribute became number one. These people had fanatical levels of integrity. Fanatical levels of integrity. Off the scale integrity. If you want to win in life, the truth is the best way. I know television doesn't tell us that, but it really, really is. So always tell the truth.